This series is on how to create sandstone art, slaster art, in other words, painting on pieces of stone. Now you'll see that this is one of my works, acrylic painting on rock, and uh, this scene is from a town called Krofrenet in the little Karoo of South Africa. Here is a piece I, of sandstone that I prepared. Um, this piece of stone I've carefully prepared with a stiff brush and with soap and water, uh, making certain that there's no stone or sand or loose uh, resi residue, no little pieces that could shelf away. What's left here is fairly permanent. I could you paint on the reverse side, which is equally good, uh, but I've chosen this uh, front piece as it has more uh, character. Uh, it's a lovely piece. So that's what I'll be using. I'm preparing it and I, in my next uh, video I'll show you exactly how I'll paint it. For the moment I just need to explain to you the art materials you require. You require acrylic paint. It doesn't matter what the grade or quality of, of the paint is as long as you have at least tubes of red, yellow and blue which are your prime colors to make other colors and certainly some white and black as I have here and then one of my favorite tubes of paint um, and in this case uh, it is yellow cadmium yellow and a deep hue of it and there are various types of acrylic paint doesn't matter, acrylic's acrylic. And then I have uh, several brushes, but before we go to the brushes, I have a a very good cokey or marking pen, because that's, I will do my initial drawings with a marking pen. And um, in this particular one, a nice sharp pointed marking pen, and then three or four, uh, well used brushes, in this case two number 12s, a number 3 and number 3 and 4 uh, and maybe even a number 1. Okay, and then a little saucer to work with and quite a bit of paper toweling to clean my, my materials. Then I need water and a little dispenser so I can mix my paints. A nice working surface. Okay. And then we move from the paint, the acrylic paint, to the paint brushes, to the permanent marker, and then the clean slaster, as I've mentioned earlier. And then the extras, the jar of water, which I showed you, paper towels, then a a picture you will utilize um, possibly from a magazine or from a photograph or from some other means and then of course your protective apron in my case this is my trusty old butcher's apron does a good job you cannot work with acrylics and expect your clothes not to get messed up so it's always wise to have some protective clothing Okay, then a chart or color spectrum, unless you have a very good memory of um, all the intricacy, intricacies of, of, of painting, um, it's always wise to know what colors can be taken out of your uh, prime colors um, and therefore you, you can use paint e economically. And finally that good working surface.
And so now I've chosen appropriate uh, picture that I want to draw out of a magazine. Um, a good turn in Nivard's Villa. Villa. Uh, this is um, the, fl the, the flowering after the rain season uh, down the the, uh, um, the Karoo area of South Africa. Um, the little Karoo or the Great Karoo. And uh, so I'm going to now draw this picture with my Koki pen. And here is the preliminary sketch. That will be my sky, my mountain range, the little lake in the distance, mountain range, sky, some foliage, some bushes. And then, of course, the f the carpet of flowers. And you'll notice they are yellow, orange, and white. Those are my three predominant colors here. All right, and I've filled my whole... P I haven't tried to follow any form of, of the stone. I've let the stone do its own thing. I've just faithfully followed and sketched out my preliminary drawing. Now we continue. Now starting with some of my white and blue. You see I've got blue. A little bit of white here. Much all the other dry. And using a number 12, I'm going to mix up a color that is that is going to be as much as that blue is in the sky starting at the top. Of my stone. Here I'm applying the paint, applying the paint to my stone and I will faithfully cover the stone right to the edges. Almost a kind of paint by numbers here. No magic, no big deal. There you are, utilizing all my, using all my paint and so I proceed. Now, <clears throat> having with my number 12, uh, done some Broad, rough brush strokes. I have now got some basic foundation for my my painting. I've got the bulk of the colour in. I still have to do that little road in this nice sandy orange. And then fill in the flowers and the water in that little space there. And possibly just lighten up the skies and make the features a little bit more distinctive. But as you can see, we're proceeding quite nicely. So we continue. And now we've made further progress using a number one brush. I put in the little details of the flowers, especially that yellow flower on, on the top of the road as it turns it's a long way to go I've lightened the sky up on the horizon um, I need to use the number two and number one brush um, to define certain of the trees and bushes and shade um, and also add to those flowers again to just pop the whole scene let's continue now i would say that's just about complete just about that is my original picture here and i'm going to give credit to this lady here um at Papkeil fontaine ronde kraal 
is surrounded by flowers. Photo here by Marion Whitehead. I hope you like it. That's how you paint acrylic on sandstone. Now this will be mounted on the wall much like other pictures I have with a um, screw and plug drilled into the wall. Thank you for watching and do subscribe to this video and uh, please share and like. Thank you.